The northern savanna zone is a fragile ecosystem sensitive to the effects of climate change. It is also a region undergoing rapid deforestation and forest degradation, including the loss of valuable shade trees. The drivers of this change are primarily from conversion to agriculture through a transition from traditional bush fallow agricultural systems to more expansive machine plowed and continuous cropping agricultural practices. Other drivers such as illegal logging, wood fuel harvesting and charcoal production and mid to late dry season fires have resulted in extensive forest degradation, much of it severe. The loss of forest cover results in more abundant growth of grasses, which in turn results in more intense fires in the dry season, frequently causing further degradation and deforestation and preventing the regeneration of forest areas already impacted by other drivers. The Ghana Shea Landscape Emission Reductions Project, GSLEP, a component of the Ghana Red Plus strategy has been developed to address this alarming situation in a transformational manner in line with national policies and measures. The Forestry Commission together with its partners um, sometime in 2008 did a very comprehensive assessment of the state of our forests and realized that we were experiencing deforestation and forest degradation at a very fast and alarming rate. And um, at that same time, the global climate change negotiations had brought on board discussions on reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation um, as a mechanism under the Paris Agreement Article um, 5, eventually as it was launched in 2015. So the Commission then put together a very comprehensive and robust strategy for Red Plus implementation, which was launched in 2016. Out of that strategy, we have five key sub-national programs. Um, one is for the high forest zone of Ghana um, and then the second which is um, also very priority for us is um, for the share or northern savannah zone of Ghana what we call the Ghana Share Landscape Emission Reductions Project. This project is funded by the Green Climate Fund and implemented through the collaborative effort between the Forestry Commission, the Global Share Alliance GSA, the United Nations Development Programme UNDP and several other stakeholders. Uh, what we seek to do is to significantly reduce deforestation and forest degradation within the five northern regions of Ghana or five regions of the north in Ghana and um, actively restore degraded share parklands. Um, this has not been done before because as we were putting together the project in consultation with communities we realized that communities had a myth on even planting or share trees um, but the myth is not substantiated. Um, some thought that you would die before it even fruits. Basically because of the very long gestation period, but research through the Cocoa Research Institute has proven that there are improved varieties that are able to fruit within three to five years. This is tested and tried. So the project is advancing this on a very large scale. We are establishing community nurseries to build capacity um, for community women and men as well. The Green Climate Fund is the largest global fund for climate financing with a very rigorous and robust screening and approval process for project applications. The Green Climate Fund approved the project in August 2020 for a grant of 30.1 million US dollars and 24.4 million co-financing from the government of Ghana and the private sector, which is the Global Share Alliance. We partnered with um, the Forestry Commission, UUNDP, to put in the proposal in assessing the situation of, of the share parklands and then through different researches and uh, engagement with different stakeholders and after a long period of engagement with um, the Green Climate Fund, three, over three years, the project was approved. The GSA is implementing components 2.1 and 2.2 and in these um, two components we are expected to raise over 3.5 million um, shares of uh, seedlings and about 480,000 uh, non-share seedlings and a non-share can be any native uh, tree, any tree that is native to the different landscapes in the region. 
The project seeks to promote sustainable approaches to land use, forest conservation, and enhance community-based resource management to stem the ongoing degradation and deforestation in the NSZ from illegal logging, charcoal production, agricultural expansion, illegal mining, and wildfires that threaten the forest and shade production system. This project would also be an important initiative to strengthen rural economies in the north, support female dominated shea harvesting systems and revenue streams and also address poverty, which is widely considered to be endemic in this zone. The beauty of this also on the other part is that the women who are engaged, if you look far beyond, have their farms close to the nursery. So they already engage in their daily sources of livelihood and then they engage in the nursery activity. That also pays them, so enhances um, their income sources. And then eventually when the planting is also done, when fruiting takes place, um, they are also going to benefit from that. And the private sector partners will still engage them, support them with um, the processing, support them with the export. So the whole value chain is taken care of and that's what the Ghana Share Landscape Emission Reductions Project seeks to do. By so doing, the project advances a paradigm shift away from short-term stopgap measures to a more integrated multi-stakeholder coordination of investments to address all identified barriers that currently prevent the restoration and sustainable management for forest and land for the achievement of reductions in emissions to strengthen adaptive capacity. We believe that the capacity is best built with um, already existing institutions, mainly NGOs, civil society organizations, um, who can support these women um, to build the capacity to raise the nurseries. And then they are aligned with private sector actors who then will take up the planting of the seedlings and then also build warehouses for storage and then um, for further processing. That's where the Global Share Alliance does really come in actively. Outputs of the G-SLEP. The G-SLEP has four outputs, which are as follows. Restoration of off-reserve degraded savanna forest and the self-financing community management in Krima. Restoration of degraded shade park lands through public-private partnerships. Restoration of degraded forest cover and forest reserves through modified tanger system plantations and fire management and implementation of an integrated monitoring system and strengthening of red plus systems. The four components which are interrelated will be implemented through a cross-sectoral, comprehensive and holistic approach driven by communities, women's groups and government institutions. These outputs will be achieved through long-term community resource management, sectoral investment, capacity building, knowledge sharing, impact monitoring and performance contracts through public-private partnerships at the landscape level. Specifically on the shea restoration, 1.75 million shea trees would be planted over the seven-year project period. This would be done through the promotion of public-private partnership between the upstream shea value chain producers receiving better extension services and downstream private sector companies who are willing to invest in measures needed to ensure their future supplies of raw materials. The Forestry Commission, together with the Global Shea Alliance, undertook a field visit to established nurseries to observe at first hand the work progress. This documentary highlights the outcome of the visit. Just barely in the first year of implementation and um, today we are on a field trip to assess some of the components of the project and how they are advancing, particularly the establishment of nurseries. This one we started several months ago. But, uh, Look at it, look at it, bro. So like how many months are these? This one's uh, the in July, then by July, and then most of them are already taken okay. So it, it takes a longer time for share to really start generating, but then on share, within a week or two. I think two, it's even better now, because it's initially better. it was like okay. one year or two. Yeah. 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 That's how share. So are you using an improved variety, or what has changed over the years? What has changed over the selection of the seeds? Ah. You can just go and collect anyhow. Okay. Collect the best, collect the right. Yeah. So 
when we bring the seeds, it's not every seed that we we'll put on the cola bag. We will do the proper selection, but this is likely to germinate. Okay. Because if the seed is dried, three days or three days, it will not germinate. It must look fresh. Here we have our plantation um, site behind us, and we also have the nursery. Um, at our nursery under the GIST lab project, we have been tasked to raise share seedlings and non share seedlings. At our nursery in Lebka, we are also in partnership with our private partner, Welma International. Um, here in the nursery in Lebka, we have raised so far about 23,000 share seedlings just in the past season. And then we also have about 6,000 share seedlings that were raised earlier on and that are one year plus that we intend to craft this season and then take them to the fold. So basically what we do at the beginning of the project or what we did at the beginning is to engage the community and then let them understand the project concept and then embrace the project because it's not a private project, it's a community-based nursery. And then we involve the women to help us in establishing the nursery and use them mostly in our activities. That started with gathering of our soils and then trying to collect our shared seedlings at the beginning of the season and then also to be able to use them to help us in the potting and the seeding. And uh, so far, the cooperation has been very good with the community, women and the leaders. But when did the potting? Yes. Yeah. 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 Can you tell me what? Tell me what you see your group. Tansi, pump pump, tansi ma, pump ma, tansi pump. Karasu chika tansi ma, didi blamziani. So katagina te sa tansi mama. Tansi mama mi ya nang lafan pump zang chete. Dama di nang kate debina den tu nang lafan zang song pa pump. Dama di tu nang ka yisal kar nang chete. Den tu nang ki peher le kar song dia. Dans le temps, ça chez le moment de malafar ne pas me dire un petit pas bas. Dis non na, dans tout le temps ne pas me dire un petit pas. Un petit pas comme quoi, comme pas une au Congo. Dans le cas de te dire notre salle le moment. We did about sixteen thousand, but the challenge, like you mentioned, is that because that time was around July, August, and July, August around that. That's why most people will even even found it difficult getting there. And we specifically look look at even well food in food trees from other communities. And it here. As an assemblyman, we need to go around and then look for developmental partners to bring to your uh, community. I was just there and it came to my doorstep. I have to just embrace it. So I didn't want to make a mistake to lose that opportunity. I voluntarily issue a land for them to do the nursery and I'm supporting it to be successful. And on behalf of the Dalong community, we are grateful to the Tumtea Association for always helping us to make sure that our mothers be empowered to support our young coming uh, brothers and sisters. <laughs> They are setting up these nurseries that we are we we are having. Um, about 70 of them in all across the, the, the northern um, savannah zone and then raised the 3.5 um, million um, share seedlings. Our estimation is that about 50% of them would survive when we transplant them into the field, but we hope to do much more than that. Another thing we're trying to do on this is to be able to graft on the seedlings that we have raised before we plant, transplant them in order to reduce the gestation period so that even within the lifespan of the project which is seven years we'll be able to see real result of 
new shade trees, fruiting, and then you know bringing benefits to the communities. When you go to a community, you are supposed to look for existing knowledge in the mess with yes. tree management. Yes. So we came and identified Trump, who is already it, and so he would help us to train the women in order to just to sustain the project after we yes. the project ends. So he's the one working with the women. Like in Libra, we also have the same strategy. So we work with him so that when we are out of the field, he's able to make sure that the mm. nursery is well managed. Your survival yeah. rate is very high. Yes, this is what we did for the shed this year. And then we also explored the whole region. There are already existing nurseries in the region that also we have knowledge in share. Mm. So we identify one in Alerbo and it was trained by the Forestry Commission, Bole. Mm. Uh -huh. So we work with them to so we have a nursery that is in Nalergo. Mm. So the seedlings there will also be used for this, this project. Mm. And, and that's what we do. So the technology is spread all over the whole region. Mm. And that's how we want it. We have a potential to make sure that we have a chance to make sure that we have a chance to make sure that we have a chance to make sure uh, my name is Rosalind. I work with the Forestry Commission and this is my colleague from the Global Share Alliance. We are partnering with the Global Share Alliance and bringing this project um, into a, a life state. Mm -hmm. It's taken us so many years, over four years, but by God's grace, through the different consultations and also all the work that we've done, it's now working. And today we are here to inspect the nurseries, see the work that's going on. The overall target for the nurseries, 70 of them are expected to be set up and they're expected to be community nurseries to involve women, particularly to enhance the livelihoods of women and um, to give you another alternative source and to plant them, as mm. Mr. Dan was saying. If we raise the nurseries and we don't plant, then we haven't done any job. So the whole idea is to plant so that we have more shared trees. All the ones that have been lost, have been cut down for fuel wood or charcoal, we are able to replace them. And we are also able to carry out education to stop further cutting. So as you are here, it's not just the nursery. If you see people cutting down, they already grown shared trees. Let's tell them to stop. It's not a good practice. And we are very happy with what we are seeing here. Your site is one of the most successful sites we have seen. I think the, the best so far. So let's clap for ourselves. No. We are doing a great job. Sia Ambawa is the cocoa of the north. It's one of the biggest income generating activity that supports women. When it's sheer season, women have a lot of money. When it's not sheer season, it's difficult for them. So for them to be employed to grow sheer seedlings, that will increase the tree population. She thinks that it's going to help women and their children more because that is where they get their livelihood. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very nice. There's order. Yeah. Implementation of the GS Lab is just one year gone, and there exist a lot of opportunities for collaborative implementation success from all relevant stakeholders. We are very, very 
grateful to our partners, particularly the Global Share Alliance, that has direct um, oversight for the establishment of the nurseries um, and working with the private sector who eventually then um, take up the aspect of planting. For any further information, kindly contact the GSLEP Landscape Office in Tamale and the Climate Change Directorate at the Forestry Commission.